This is the second attempt of our live update. Uh, I've got a little different location, hopefully closer to the Wi-Fi, but that might not mean anything because of everybody using Wi-Fi. But let's give it a shot, see what happens. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to connect. And I can just picture seeing everyone's face. And I pray, Lord, that this would be an encouragement to give them a sense that you are working even in the midst of this craziness. I do pray for so many families affected right now, lost uh, loved ones. I pray for the Noodle family especially. And uh, Lord, I ask that you just be with Karen and help her through this time. And Lord, I pray uh, for others that it's still so fresh and still the uncertainty. But Lord, we thank you. We trust you. Go before us. We pray, Lord, give us wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, uh, April 14th. I uh, can't believe how long this has been into this season already. But here we are. We find ourselves still here. And this past Easter weekend, um, certainly different than we imagined. But at the same time, God did something amazing. And we had just such an impact of so many people responding and stories and testimonies. Good Friday, we had online communion and uh, saw a number of people posting pictures of having communion together. Um, Easter services, again, uh, thousands turned out. First online Easter service we've done in history. I'm praying it's the last, but at the same time, you know, we saw the Lord move. Um, and plus there's lots of news. And, and at this point in the in this situation, there's such rancor in the government and, you know, uh, the left, the right, uh, the conspiracy theories of all of this thing. And I've posted a few videos too that make me question some of the, you know, the standard treatment of this and the isolation. Is that going to help in the long run? Uh, I've made some comments even uh, on one of the updates or Good Friday and how I was a little annoyed at the governor giving all these rules and regulations and uh, it sounded like I was a rebel, and there is a little rebel in me, but at the same time, I, I, when I said, don't tell me what to do, I wasn't referring to uh, obviously not acknowledging the authorities over us uh, civilly, but that what we do for love far transcends what anyone would do out of fear of punishment. So that was my point. We do more. You know, we care more. We want to serve more. We want to help. We want to use every resource we can to help people through this season. So that's why we do what we do. And uh, I want that to be clear. Well, you know, there's a lot of uh, question uh, in regard to end times. Is this, is this um, part of the tribulation? Is it the precursor? Are we on the road? And I would say, listen, the Bible does say in the end times, we would be thrust toward a more global kind of mentality and an economic control uh, ruled by the Antichrist eventually. But that's in the tribulation. And I, I really have a difficulty uh, when I read the scriptures seeing the church there. People that read Matthew 24 don't see the difference between that and what Paul eventually teaches in 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians in Revelation. You see no mention of the church during the time of tribulation on the earth. Uh, at the same time, it doesn't mean we're not going to go through difficulties. And some have asked, is this birth pangs? And uh, in each of these cases, I, I don't see this as the judgment of God. I mentioned on a question and answer on Saturday night about how I see this more as the mercy of God. Uh, there's something powerful that's happening right now. People are, uh, which ordinarily would not give God the time of day, are beginning to look up and wonder, you know, what, what, if, what did I trust in? What am, what am I putting all of my hope in? Is it some leader that's going to get me through this and solve these problems? And to realize that we need to look to God. And maybe he's lifted his hand of protection off of us as a nation because we basically thumbed our noses at him. And uh, he's saying, okay, you want to live without me? I'll, I'll let you go. I'll let you, I'll let you do it. I'll give you over to your depraved mind and eventually end up seeing the degra degradation of society. Um, and of course, all these things that are hitting us, the tornadoes just recently, I know Samaritan's Purse is sending out some relief help down there, and uh, we're, um, we're continually trying to think of ways that we can minister. We're praying for the unit that they have, the medical unit in um, Central Park. Uh, we're praying how we can be a part of the solution in a lot of these things. Well, I, again, I don't, we are moving more and more toward, I'm sure, in whatever time frame God has, 
uh, toward that global judgment that will come upon the whole earth. Uh, for now, however, it's the time to look up. It's time to look to the Lord. It's time to look to see what he has done to give us this opportunity to make a difference. So uh, I want to encourage you with that. Well, this, uh, this will encourage you. If you want to know one thing that's powerful is that, you know, the Lord says, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And it doesn't really matter, ultimately, what man does. You know, the nations are dropping the bucket to God. And I got this great perspective. A pastor from, that's ministering in the Arabic world uh, came up with a historical document that I thought was interesting. A prominent medieval Egyptian historian, I can't pronounce his name, recorded some details about the fourth Fatimid Caliph of Al-Muziz, uh, Lin Dan Allah. I can't even tell you if I'm saying that right. But he says he ruled from 953 to 975 AD and moved the center of power of the uh, Fatimid dynasty from Tunisia to Egypt. So now the Muslim power is in Egypt and under the Fatimids, the city of Cairo was founded in 969 and he issued a decree that all churches of the Coptic Christian community in the land were forbidden to meet. Uh, they were forbidden for the church bells to ring it was a capital punishment threatened to anyone who dared to go to church or meet in a church building uh, or even open a church. Now, it wasn't a few months. It was nine years. I mean, churches literally fell into disrepair. Some traveled across the desert seeking monasteries in the wilderness to meet, but most of them couldn't move, and they were forced to stay in their homes Sunday after Sunday for nine years. Well, after nine years, the caliph decided to see for himself how the Coptic Christians were now crushed and disgraced. He disguised himself and walked out on the streets uh, in the quarter of Old Cairo and heard the sound of their prayers, Bible readings, worship from every house he passed. His reaction was another decree, a famous quote, Open the churches and let them pray as they please. I thought I'd close the church in every street only to find out I opened a church in every home. Now, that doesn't encourage you. God is on the throne. This is not going to stop his work. We're seeing his hand at work. You know, so many uh, historical documents. In fact, I want to encourage you, if you're a parent, uh, this is a Ethel Barrett classic by, on John Welsh. The story of this man uh, back in the day when there was such persecution in England against the church and in France. This man was banished from England. He went to France and he learned French in two weeks, began preaching established a church, then he was persecuted there. And literally, they would surround his village and they would fire cannonballs and one went right through his bedroom window. But he was the man, and literally the title of that is the man who could not be stopped because he just prayed and he trusted prayer. And it said that the kings feared his prayers more than armies of other nations. A great story of how God can work in the midst of persecution. Another one, Samuel Morris, a young young uh, black African prince who was captured by a, 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 a warring tribe, uh, was, thought he was going to die and you know he was held up for ransom, knew his tribe would not pay the ransom, he knew he was going to die, and all of a sudden his ropes just fell off of him and he heard a voice run, he ran. And his whole story is amazing because he found some, finds himself eventually running into the, uh, you know, uh, some missionaries who share the gospel and he's like, well that's the voice I heard. He, and eventually goes on a ship to, to America, and through his life, everyone on board the ship got saved. It was an anointing on his life, and eventually went to the Midwest, and a college was started after his name. Samuel Morris, an apostle of simple faith. Wow, what a story. It's great to have those resources for kids, and you know, as well, there's some other things that you can read. My wife was reminding me of how biblical Robinson Crusoe and uh, Swiss Family Robinson, the reason there's no Robinson name in Swiss, but they wanted to have their own story, so uh, like Robinson Crusoe, so it was Swiss Family Robinson. But both of those stories, rich stories, filled with biblical illustrations. Well, here, you know, at Calvary, we've been hearing a lot of testimonies, even just of how churches celebrated Easter, and um, church members, I should say, celebrated Easter. One testimony was, at Easter, we usually go to church, then go to my husband's side of the family. It's always hectic time, have to go to both sides of the family. They're expecting to see us, we check out the boxes. But now it's just the three of us. 
It started early with a message from Pastor Lloyd, then we went on a scavenger hunt. We looked at the flowers, the birds, the trees, and took pictures. God's perfect hand in creation. Dinner, uh, we had dinner and then did Easter lesson with our daughter. It was so beautiful to be focused on the things of God instead of being pulled in so many different directions. So listen, now that you've got that opportunity, you know, take, that, take advantage of that. Take, get back to the family. Another family hosted their own egg hunt covering several neighboring towns. They had their kids fill 160 eggs with John 316 printed on a piece of paper along with a Christian toy and a bracelet. They drove around and threw them gently out of the car and scattered them. I won't talk about littering, but hopefully those eggs were found. And you know what? Uh, people that are writing chalk on the sidewalk still and, 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 and pictures of biblical scenes on sidewalks, it's amazing. Families decorated their mailboxes with Bible verses, had, had signs in their windows and their lawns. Um, you see a lot more testimonies and photos on our website. I would really encourage you to not only go there to read some of them, but we'd love to hear your testimony, whether it's an Easter testimony, whether it's something just recently because of the virus. Um, you can email that at kate at ccob.org uh, and just tell us how you celebrated Easter and any other testimony you might have. I hope you had a chance to watch the Sight and Sound uh, Jesus. That, that was free for the weekend. Uh, now you have to pay for it if you want, the DVD. I'll tell you, it's well worth it if you didn't see it. Uh, I'd go see it again. And uh, the Pilgrim's Progress, of course, was on the weekend. Uh, there's also another feature, uh, Calvary Chapel Magazine, which normally comes out this time, and we give a copy out to everybody in the church. Um, obviously, we are not meeting. They put it online. And there's a link there that you can view all of the stories. And there's a lot of great uh, testimonies of pastors of how they're making the most of this. A um, couple of announcements. And um, then I'm going to tell you where I'm going in the Bible uh, for the next few uh, weeks. Um, National Day of Prayer is coming up on May 7th. And uh, we're planning to have, we're praying that we be able to meet by then. I mean, no, it's a vain hope, perhaps, in some people's minds, but we're still praying. Uh, we still have Plan B and Plan C. Uh, you know, the worship is putting some really cool things together uh, for, you know, creating even a cell phone choir. Uh, I was really inspired by not just the one we showed on Good Friday, but also Pittsburgh. Actually, uh, there was about 50 churches that joined, and uh, they had one song they sang, The Lord Bless Thee, and... They all had a different part and all the different singers. I was moved by the unity and I thought to myself, this, this could be truly a precursor, not just to the trouble that's going to come in the world, but a precursor of revival in the church. When you start seeing churches kind of just not worry about the little minor differences, but focus on the main thing together, proclaiming the name of Jesus and honoring him, that's when you begin to see things happen and a lot of people are praying. Oh, I'll tell you what, we have, the, we have the recipe to see God do something in our day. And it would be just like God to show himself powerful, to rescue so many out of the world, revive those that need to return to him, and, and awaken those that need to come to life in him before he comes and judges this world. You see, that's just the Lord's, he, he's so merciful and gracious. Even in judgment, he remembers mercy. We've been sending emails with activities to read on our, on our you know, Calvary Connect. If you're not signed up for that, I'd highly recommend it. Uh, we encourage you to see a fresh new series now that's come out, uh, the Chosen series. I guess VidAngel, but you can just do a search on the Chosen series, or actually you can just go to our website. We have the link there. It's amazing. It, it's like slowing down in the life of Jesus and trying to really get into... A day in the life of Jesus you know there's one with Jesus and the little children that you got to sit and watch with your whole family it's 30 minute episodes I think there's like eight episodes and they're gonna be making more it's just snapshots into the life of Jesus that really brings it alive and really makes you think wow this I can I can relate with this in a very real way how God became a man and he didn't walk three feet off the ground with a halo around his head he became a man and he walked like us and just as the sight and sound Jesus gives me a portrayal of, I think, the real Jesus, how he would be just normal, this Chosen series, I'm very impressed with it. And I think you will be as well. So um, just so you know, the church offices are currently closed. Uh, as We're being very careful right now with some virus and the staff. Calls are being forwarded, however, so if you call in during regular business hours, 
you know, they're still forwarded to some leaders. And in the case of emergency, the pastoral emergency number is still, still listed online. And we do, do want to hear from you. You know, we, we look, don't be shy about calling for prayer, for encouragement, um, emailing us as well. Uh, we really, everything is online that you can see how you can connect. A couple of uh, cool updates. Uh, we had reached out to uh, our gradient group, had reached out to the local colleges and said, look, we're here to pray for students. Uh, if you get students that are international students and are sitting in their dorms and everyone's isolated and they need some encouragement, uh, let us know. And I got to tell you, they actually posted uh, on their website a response on st some state-run institutions and some colleges and actually are sharing on their social media platforms. If you need prayer or encouragement, reach out to Calvary Chapel and they're there, the Young Gradient Group and the links are there. And wow, I pray for that. I really pray God would do something powerful there. Uh, so tomorrow uh, night uh, at 6 p.m., the update's gonna be done by Pastor Brian Dumphy. Uh, he's gonna give you the, you know, uh, be the church wherever you are kind of message there and how many different opportunities you can start on. There's so many cool things. Uh, then on Wednesday night service, uh, that's happening. I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of a series that's really going to be family oriented. Uh, I'm doing a little thing because instead of just kind of hodgepodge hitting here and there, I felt like the Lord wanted me to do something consistent. So I'm going to do some Proverbs and Psalms for today. So as the Lord leads, I'll pick out some Proverbs and some Psalms and each of the messages and relate them to how we can live practically in some of these ways. Uh, and also, um, I'm going to be embarking this weekend on a brand new series. Um, oh, by the way, just for the rest of the week, Thursday night, Mom's Group. There's more information online. And uh, Saturday night, we'll still have the Bridge Bible uh, talk uh, at 6 p.m. with Pastor Robert and myself. Uh, you, if you want to call in and leave a message asking a question, a Bible question, or a question about living the Christian life, uh, you can do that. You can call in 732-479-0557, or you can email a question. I like it when you call, and it sounds like you know, you're know you asking the question, we're answering it. It's not live yet. We're, we got just we're two months short of getting this technology that we'd be live before the virus hit so we couldn't really do it but we will eventually have live call in but in the meantime you can call 732-479-0557 or you can email if you don't want to call bridgebible at bridgeradio.org and all of that is on the on the uh, website um, but I want to remind you uh, and pray for me because this Sunday I'm starting a new series on the book of 1st Thessalonians and why that particular book is because it's one of the early churches Paul was only there for a space of about three weeks and saw an amazing work of God in people's lives a little church got established in the home the power of the home right there and and just his influence as a leader was more influential rather than you know top-down authority and he just served them and he loved them as a, as a father loves his children and as a mom nursing her children and poured into them and then shares a lot about the end times so we're gonna we're gonna do this in a quick you know probably three or four or five week timing uh, in first Thessalonians and then if we still are in this viral thing we'll either go into second Thessalonians we come back or we'll revisit and come back to Jude where we left off well that's my update for now uh, probably longer than I wanted to go but boy I I just I can't see your face I can envision your faces I and I just even getting some of those pictures that some are sending of them sitting around watching and praying together as a family and the kids sitting there with them. Man, that's, that's the church. And if we could never meet again in a building, if this thing gets crazier and crazier, just know this. God has this all under control. It's his church. He's going to do his will. Let's trust in him. Father, thank you so much for the comfort that my wife and I have received in these last few weeks, the loss of our son. So much so that it's just given us such an uplifting and a power and a care and a love for others that are going through a burdensome losses. And Lord, thank you that you're merciful. And I thank you your purposes are, are unfolding right in front of us. Lord, help us to take advantage, make the most of this opportunity we have to connect in people real time. Give us wisdom, outside-of-the-box things that we can inspire others with. 
guide and lead. And I pray for any here, perhaps even just tuning in, that haven't really a confidence that they know you and that if they were to breathe their last, they'd be with you. Lord, I pray that they really believe the simple gospel that you, Jesus, died for us on the cross. You paid a penalty that we would have had to pay and would have all eternity to pay that in hell. And yet you took that hell upon yourself so that we could be rescued. I pray, Father, for some to put their trust in you right now, to call upon your name that they might be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.